Good afternoon, everyone. I think we will we'll start. We are few, but very good. So um, let me kindly thank you all of you for coming today. We have a very interesting seminar by Professor Andres Lopez. Also, let me apologize. The chief economist is not available today, and I'm going to try to replace him as, as far as I can. Um, Professor Lopez uh, is uh, a researcher and a professor of the University of Buenos Aires. He specializes in economics of innovation as well as uh, intellectual property. And he has a very interesting uh, presentation today about the impact of TRIPS in Latin American, Latin American countries, which I believe is an understudied issue. Uh, I think we're going to have an interesting debate issuing from this presentation. Uh, we're going to agree in, in disagreeing. But um, more importantly, um, at least for me, I don't know if he remembers, but he was my supervisor of my final work in, in my undergraduate studies in the same university, University of Buenos Aires. And at the time, we were, I was starting to be specialized in innovation economics, and he was at that time already specializing in innovation economics. He did his dissertation, his PhD dissertation on that topic. He's saying that I'm older than you. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That, that's the, the whole point of this is establishing that uh, correctly and on record. Uh, this, the second point of this, I think, is, is a good symptom for the region. Because at that time, nobody was talking about intellectual property in, in, in Latin America, mostly about innovation. And we can see that I have started to be specialized in intellectual property, but also Professor Lopez and, and many others, which means that uh, regardless which position we might take in favor or against or any other possible position in terms of IP, it's interesting that we have more and more knowledge and more and more facts to discuss this. I think that's encouraging for the debate. And I understand that WIPO Seminars is also, in, in this respect, an interesting forum. So, uh, with that saying, I will give the floor to Andres Lopez. Okay. Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I don't know if you will regret having invited me after my presentation, but anyway, let's uh, find out later. Uh, as Julio said, I've been working on these issues for many years, and uh, it is an understudied issue because it's an understudied issue for policy making also in Latin America, not only from the academic uh, point of view, but also in the everyday discussions, uh, intellectual property do not rank high, except perhaps in some countries like Brazil or in some specific topics, let's say drugs. But uh, in general, people do not uh, uh, do not put uh, intellectual property issues in the uh, in the rank of uh, development issues uh, uh, broadly in, in, in our in, in our countries. So, um, uh, although this 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 is beginning to change, uh, there are less studies than uh, we should wish in order to learn more about the the impacts and the the the. the the, the situation of intellectual property in general in Latin America. Uh, in fact, for instance, uh, there are many countries which have innovation uh, surveys in Latin America nowadays. Um, very few ask uh, anything of, uh, more than patents in, in terms of uh, what, what, what kind of use do firms use of intellectual property mechanisms. In fact, uh, the, only in Brazil they ask about trademarks and other intellectual property mechanisms, but in, in most cases they only ask about patents, and they, on, uh, they do not all, uh, ask either about uh, other appropriability mechanisms like uh, first comer or uh, other things. So th this, uh, we, we, we have a, a lack of data also. The, not only uh, uh, the, the studies are few, but data is less than, less than perfect. Uh, well, the, the motivation of the study, which I jointly wrote with uh, my colleague uh, Valeria Arza, who also is an acquaintance of Julia, and uh, is, uh, uh, was to learn about uh, what happened after trips in, in our region. Uh, trips, well, as you very well know, the tri trips generated a strong debate among in, in many Latin American countries. Uh, for instance, in Argentina, I'm Argentinian, the, the debate was really strong, and in the Congress there, was, there were a lot of discussions, uh, people who were uh, favor or against trips. Uh, 
and uh, there were a lot of arguments. We will review them uh, very briefly later. But anyway, uh, there, there have been more than there, we, there are uh, more than ten years have passed since tri trips was signed in, in all Latin American countries. And the fact is that we wanted to learn what happened with patenting in our countries after trips was after after the, the patent laws in most Latin American countries were reformed in order to adapt to the TRIPS uh, requirements. So, um, the, and, and, and we, we found almost no studies on, on that subject. Perhaps some of you may, may, may uh, mention some studies which I do not know, but uh, anyway, by searching in Google and other and more specialized uh, websites on, on innovation studies, we, we, we found very little, very, very few studies. So we wanted to contribute to, to this debate. And um, in fact, uh, the, the, we, we had two questions. First, uh, did TRIPS, um, did the uh, uh, TRIPS driven modification in patent laws in Latin America uh, have an impact on the level of patenting in our countries? So after TRIPS, the, the, did we see an, an increase in patent uh, counts in our countries? And the second one, which is, I think, more interesting, is uh, it was whether the, the, the impact was different uh, according to the nationality of the, of the patent uh, applicants and holders. Uh, and uh, later, we, we, I will show you some statistics showing that our, uh, uh, back in the, our guess that uh, Non-residents had increased their, their patent applications and their patent grants after trips, and uh, residents in Latin American countries did not increase their patent uh, propensity. And uh, our econometrics uh, exercises um, show that. So I, 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 I am telling you the end of the story. And uh, you know that uh, First, uh, before going to the study, there, there is a strong debate about uh, whether patents are a good in indica indicator of innovation. Uh, so th this is an old debate because patents, well, you know, uh, you are counting patents and patents have very different uh, economic uh, importance, so you, you cannot simply count patents and assuming that uh, all the, have the same value in terms of the innovation outputs and um, uh, firms patent th uh, uh, um, uh, have patents that they do not use, and many very important innovations in the world's history have never been patented. So there is a lot. There are a lot of old issues, but there are a lot of new issues uh, that uh, um, that uh, um, increase the, the the doubts about whether patenting outputs are a good innovation indicator. Um, and from the, since the st pioneer study of Cohen, Walsh, Nelson, et al., we know that uh, firms patent for a number of reasons which do not have to do with the deci decision to protect the innovations, but also they patent because of strategic reasons like blocking innovations by others or litigations, etc. So, in a patent, uh, uh, patents are an imperfect innovation indicator. On the other hand, uh, as all uh, who, who work on innovation issues very well know, uh, innovation is very, hardly, uh, is very hard to measure. There, 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 is, uh, there is not a single indicator which can be used, and uh, also uh, R&D uh, intensities are, are an imperfect indicator. And this, uh, the fact that uh, innovation indicators are hard to find is even more important in Latin American countries, because in Latin American countries, most firms do not play the game of uh, radical innovation and, or, or world-first innovations, but they play most, mostly uh, the game of uh, adaptive innovation, and they rarely undertook, uh, undertake um, formal R&D activities. So in Latin America, the issue of uh, innovation indicators is even more um, uh, it's even more pressing, and, uh, and we, we still do not have a, a, a very a good set of indicators to learn about what's really happening in terms of innovation in Latin America. Having said this, uh, <clears throat> the imperfect quantitative evidence and the also imperfect qualitative evidence uh, tells us that innovation in Latin America is still... Um, uh, is still far, far from being uh, 
uh, strong, and uh, also only Brazil spends more than 1% uh, of the GDP in terms of R&D. The other countries are far behind that, that level, and more important, perhaps, the participation of the private sector in R&D expenditures in Latin America is very, is very low, and in fact, the increases that we see in the last decade in, more, in many Latin American countries in terms of R&D intensities are uh, uh, directly related to a higher public expenditure, which has been allowed by the uh, better macroeconomic situation and the relaxation of sub some <coughs> budget constraints. So uh, the private sector, in particular, in, 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 in our countries, is, uh, has uh, um, spends very, very, very few in terms of R&D activities, and uh, the, the share of uh, Latin America in terms of patents, for instance, in the European Patent Office or the US Patent Office, is very low, extremely low, ridiculously low. Uh, in fact, and, and in fact, our region has been losing share. Uh, uh, um, and while well, Asian firms have obviously uh, gained a lot of uh, of, uh, of presence in that in that area, so uh, the, the, I, I, I'm saying this, these things uh, with two objectives. First, our study deals with the impacts of trips on patenting, not on innovation. Okay, because we 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 we, we, do, we as I said before. Patenting, patenting is not necessarily a perfect innovation, a, a indicator of innovation. So, of course, it is related, but our, our results are about patenting, not necessarily about innovation. Okay, and and the second uh, the second objective is to tell you that um, in Latin America there are a number of factors that are blocking uh, innovation, uh, and I will mention them later in the conclusions. And, and, and IPR laws are only a, a part of, of, the, of the factors that uh, are, are, are um, um, let's say, blocking innovation efforts in our region. So there are a number of other factors which are more important, in our view, for uh, innovation and that must be dealt with uh, uh, specific policies. And IPR is not perhaps at the present situation in our region, the, the, the more important, the most important. So, uh, in the well, I, I will know, I will review this very briefly because we are at Geneva, the WIPO, so everybody knows what the positive and the, the, the which are the, the the arguments in favor in, in favor of trips and the arguments against trips. And um, very briefly, trips uh, supporters say that. Uh, Trips uh, that uh, a reform in patent laws in, in, in developing countries could create more incentives for R&D activities in developed countries to take into account the needs of developing countries, especially, for instance, developing drugs which are not available and that uh, 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 attack specific diseases of uh, developing countries. Second, foster domestic R&D activities in developing countries by improving the appropriability conditions faced by domestic innovators. And third, to stimulate technology transfer from developing countries via uh, trade, uh, FDI, and licensing, since uh, multinational firms are more safe uh, uh, regarding their intellectual property rights. And uh, on, on the other hand, you have a number of negative uh, of arguments uh, posing possible negative uh, impacts. First, uh, well, there is a, a lot of literature that tries to show that uh, many countries and many firms which are now um, uh, world-class innovators began by imitating and by copying and by doing reverse engineering and lacks uh, intellectual property regimes uh, favor this kind of uh, behavior. So uh, in, um, making uh, <coughs> uh, IPR regimes more strong uh, could block the, this road to, towards the development of innovation capabilities. Uh, this is, uh, there is a, 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 a a large uh, literature on this issue about Asian countries, Korea, Taiwan, etc. Second, the distribution of benefits from trips are very uneven in terms of uh, royalties and payments. So, developing countries could suffer net losses in the losses in the short run. Uh, and third, uh, stronger IPR protection may lead to higher prices of medicines and other inputs, and other goods which are uh, uh, which have uh, which. Uh, are very important from the social point of view. So there, there are uh, some studies 
trying to learn about whether IPR, stronger IPR regimes have positive or negative impacts in developing countries, uh, trying to deal with one or, or more of these arguments, which I uh, mentioned before. But th these studies are not really conclusive in general. So, the, the, for instance, the, there are some studies that uh, uh, show that the pharmaceutical industry um, <clears throat> developed some drugs which were uh, which um, uh, were uh, relevant to tropical diseases in countries like India when India strengthened the uh, intellectual property regime. But uh, other, in general, the, the evidence shows that stronger IPR regimes in developing countries have not motivated increases in R&D in developed countries. So mm, this, uh, there is no evidence uh, in favor of, of this argument. And second, uh, what happens when, with IPR regimes in terms of uh, local innovation in developing countries? There are a few studies which show claim uh, positive effects, but uh, these studies have some methodological drawbacks in terms of, for instance, they mix developed and developing countries, and uh, uh, IPR indexes could uh, be, so the, the problem is this. Uh, if you if you use an IPR index like the Ginard de Park index, for instance, and then and then you try to learn whether they increase uh, the uh, in the Ginard de Park index, uh, that meaning that uh, the intellectual property regime has improved in this in that country, um, and you use only the Ginard de Park uh, index and uh, uh, in a, in an econometric study, this uh, this kind of study. Could, uh, the, the, the genetic pack index, the increase in the genetic pack index, could be related to other changes in the institutional setting of the, of the country. So, the, um, the, the, this kind of studies may confound the increase, the the, the impact of the uh, of the change in the IPR regime with the change with other changes in in, 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 in those countries, which uh, also have to do with uh, the modification in the institutional environment. So. Uh, the, that uh, we, we, we try to deal with this issue in, in our study, uh, separating developing countries and developed countries, and trying to uh, do some econometric exercises which uh, could, I, we think, uh, uh, deal with this, with this problem. And said, the, the evidence is more strong in terms of uh, that IPR regimes favor technology transfer to developing countries. So uh, the, if you review the, third, the three uh, arguments in favor of TRIPS, uh, we could say that the ev empirical evidence is more favorable for the third argument, uh, that, uh, that is the argument that uh, foreign firms feel safer to transfer technology to developing countries in which IPR regimes have been improved uh, via trade or licensing or FDI, but uh, the evidence is not so in favor of the other two arguments. First, that stronger IPR regimes improve uh, increase R&D activities in developed countries aimed at dealing with uh, problems uh, specific uh, of uh, developing countries, and the other argument saying that uh, IPR regimes, uh, stronger IPR regimes could foster innovation, local innovation by residents, by local firms in, in developing countries. And uh, regarding specifically TRIPS, uh, the, the studies are even less. So there are... Uh, uh, the, the, the studies are, are even non-existent about uh, the impact of trips on developing countries in terms of uh, the, the issues that we are dealing with. No? Perhaps there are other studies dealing with the prices of medicines, etc. But uh, the, the studies trying to learn what happened with trips uh, in terms of innovation are, are rare. And in fact, one of the only ones that we, we have found was uh, one by Hamdan Libramento, who is also an, an economist here at WIPO, showing that TRIPS was positive in terms of uh, technology transfer, so the, in the same line that the studies I mentioned before, but it was negative uh, for the actual application of new technologies because it increases the cost of using no, new technologies by entrepreneurs in developing countries. So um, uh, TRIPS favored technology transfer, but it increased the cost uh, faced by develop by developing countries entrepreneurs to use new technologies, so the, the, the impact, in fact, is, is mixed. So uh, our, our aim was trying to learn what happens in terms of uh, trips in Latin America, uh, separating patenting by residents and non-residents. So uh, first, some statistical evidence. First, 
in Latin America, the Ginate Park Index, which uh, increases when the IPR regimes are stronger in terms of not only of design, but also in terms of uh, application, etc., enforcement, uh, the, the increase is, is obvious. So you see that Latin American countries have been converging to the standards of IPR uh, protection of uh, developing countries. The, the, the increase has been almost uh, three, by, uh, three times in, uh, between 1990 and 2005. And um, so that's clearly related to the uh, uh, modifications in the patent regimes uh, in order to adapt them to the uh, TRIPS uh, requirements. But what happened uh, with patents? So in the, in, in the left side, you, you see uh, the statistics of uh, developing countries. And in the right side, you see the statistics of Latin American countries. And you may see that. Uh, comparing the 20 years before uh, all, uh, 2000, when all Latin American countries had signed the TRIPS uh, agreement, and had, uh, all, by, 2001, by 2000, all Latin American countries signing TRIPS had adapted the patent regimes to the TRIPS requirements, you see that in developing countries, uh, the, the, TRIPS the, the, the patent statistics uh, went up. So uh, in, in, in the last uh, 10 years, uh, patenting was higher than in the previous uh, 20 years, uh, both by residents and non-residents in, in developed countries. But in, uh, in Latin America, you may see that also an increase in, in, the, in, the, trend, in, the, in the year in, after 2000, comparing with the, the previous 20 years. But the increase is only seen in the uh, non-residents patenting. Residents' applications have almost uh, no ch uh, no, has uh, have almost no change, and the same happens with uh, patent grants. You see increases in developed countries. You see increases in Latin American countries in terms of patent grants to non-residents, but patents uh, granted to residents ha shows uh, show no increase in in, in uh, after trips. So the statistical evidence, uh, the the simple statistical evidence, uh, suggests that. Uh, modifications in patent laws in Latin America in order to adapt them to TRIPS requirements have mostly been uh, uh, ripped by uh, non-residents and have had no impacts in terms of patent applications and grants to residents. Uh, then we undertake two econometric studies to analyze whether this hypothesis was right uh, we built a data set uh, of 28 developed countries and 13 Latin American countries, uh, uh, comparing what happened uh, after and before 2000. And we used uh, WIPO data for granted patent and applications by residents and non-residents. And we assume that WIPO data is very good. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and uh, so we, we use it with confidence. And uh, we employ the World Data Bank for a number of control variables, population, GDP per capita, and uh, uh, trade openness, etc. And we uh, employ two, 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 we use two, two different methodologies. First, we built a fixed effect model to assess the impact of strengthening IPR regimes. And we use the Ginate Park Index as representative of the strength of the IPR regimes. And then we use a, a quasi-experimental design using what is called the difference and uh, indifference techniques to learn about the specific uh, incidence of TRIPS compliance by Latin American countries. And I'm not an econometrician, so my colleague is the, is, uh, the one who knows about econometrics. So all econometric questions, I, I may take them, but uh, the, the answer will be by email. And uh, so uh, I show you the results. Uh, th this is the, fi the fixed model, uh, uh, the fixed effect model. Um, you may see, if, if I stand up, the, the, the microphone is still uh, uh, running. Yes. yes. Uh, this is the, the, the relevant uh, line. So uh, here we have the impact of, uh, the, the impact of, of uh, um, improving or strengthening IPR regimes in uh, using the Ginate Park Index. No, as I, as I told you before, Ginate Park Index uh, increased in, in all countries, but uh, the increase was stronger in Latin American countries, and they converged to the, to the level of uh, IPR protection in developed countries. So we tried to learn whether a stronger IPR regimes 
uh, foster innovation, uh, fast foster uh, patenting in, uh, in, in by uh, residents and non-residents. The first two columns show the general results. So here we are mixing all countries, developed and Latin American countries, and we find that increasing the uh, uh, um, increasing the genetic pack index had a negative impact in terms of uh, patent grants and had uh, no impact in terms of patent application. So it, it, it is content, counterintuitive, no? So because we, 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 we find that the genetic pack index increases and the level of patent grants decreases. So uh, it goes against the, the rationale uh, and, but we find, we think that this, is, uh, this, this result is confounding the effects of uh, what's happening with the stronger IPA regimes in developed countries vis-a-vis -vis developed uh, Latin American countries. So we separate the sample and then we have the results here for Latin American countries only in terms of non-residents and residents. And what we uh, found is that when you separate uh, we, uh, with the sample and when you only analyze what's happening in Latin American countries, an increase in the Chinate Park Index, that is an improvement in the strength of uh, the IPR regime, effect, uh, in fact um, fosters an, impact, an increase in terms of patent grants and applications by non-residents. Hence, when the Chinate Park Index increases, when the IPR regimes are stronger, non-residents patent more than before. But what's happening with residents? What's happening with local firms and local agents? Patent grants and applications decrease. So, an, uh, an improvement in the strong in the strength of the IPR regime fosters, as expected, more patenting by non-residents. But it does not foster more patenting by non-residents. In fact, it fosters a decrease in patent applications and grants by residents. So, this is a fixed effect model. And uh, it, it allows us to uh, to to um, uh, to separate the impact of the, of the increase in the IPR regime from other, the impacts of other changes which are not captured in our model, but uh, which are unobservable by us, but that anyway could have an impact on the pattern behavior by residents and non-residents. So this uh, is a is a better methodological design vis-a-vis. Uh, uh, other models which uh, do not use fixed fix effects. So, uh, and, and uh, that uh, in that case, the increase in the genetic part, the, the impact of the genetic part index could be could include the impact of uh, other changes which are not observed by uh, the, uh, the the economist, which is un undertaking this kind of studies. So, uh, we we undertake another study, which is uh, which is a methodology called, called the difference in difference, which is. Uh, which is useful for, uh, for learning about what happens when, when, when some, a group of countries or a group of a anything uh, uh, has uh, what we call a treatment. It's like, it's like trying to replicate what the drugs tests do. Because, well, you, you take a sample of uh, individuals which are, have a disease and you apply uh, some drug to, uh, to a group of them and you do not apply the drug to the other group and you see what, which is the difference between the, the two groups after the treatment. One group was treated, the other group was not treated. Well, this kind of design uh, tries to replicate to some extent this, this logic. So we have, here we have a treatment. Which is the treatment? The application of trips. So the treatment is the, the countries have adapted their uh, laws to the uh, TRIPS requirement. So we, we, with this methodology, we are able to learn what happens after the treatment. That is, after the treatment, the patenting behavior in those countries change or not? So there, uh, uh, the, the first six lines are the more relevant, but in fact the two which are in, in great shade, in great shade are the more important. Um, first, uh, here we have all countries, and then you see the signs, the negative signs obviously shows that the patent behavior had a negative change. And here we have the incidence rate ratios, which shows the strength of the change. And first, we find that after trips, countries in general. Uh, the, the, the patent counts in, in, in countries in general uh, are, are, are lower. Well, th that's, that's surprising, but uh, in fact, that is again confusing the, 
the behavior of developed countries and Latin American countries. And we have a, a note fact for our, for our study, that is that uh, in, 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 in Europe, patent counts are, have been decreasing in many countries because uh, patent counts have increased a lot in, in the European Patent Office. So uh, the, the, this, uh, the, the, this uh, could be also reflecting that, that issue. Uh, what happens in lack countries specifically? What happens in lack countries? Well, in, LAC, in Latin American countries, patent grants and applications decrease after the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the trips, uh, the, 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 the adaptation of the IPR regimes to the trips law, vis-a-vis uh, -vis what happens in developed countries. So after trips, patents in Latin American countries are lower than before trips uh, in comparison with uh, developed, com developed countries. And, uh, so uh, the, the first result is that after trips, uh, the, the patenting in Latin American countries did not change. Uh, so uh, and this is this is shown in this in this line. No, the, this this line shows that the coefficients are not significant. So after trips, uh, driven modifications in IPR regimes in Latin American countries, the result is that patenting has not changed. Uh, um, in, in our region. But what happens when we try to learn whether this, uh, uh, the, uh, whether, um, when, whether this uh, impact was different in terms of residents and non-residents? Well, here is the, 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 the relevant line, and here we are showing the interaction of, three, of three, the, the three changes. The signing of the TRIPS agreement uh, and uh, separating Latin American countries from developed countries and separating residents and non-residents. So this, these coefficients show the, 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 the joint effect of these three dimensions. And we find that after trips, patenting by, non, by residents in Latin American countries decreased. OK? So uh, confirming the results of our previous exercise. So before trips, uh, uh, patenting by residents in Latin American countries is lower than uh, before trips, and uh, so um, the, the, uh, in fact, we are able to 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 um, to, to estimate the, the 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 magnitude of the impacts, and uh, we find that residents uh, patent systematically less than non-residents in Latin American countries after trips. Uh, in fact, the the the, the, the magnitude is 81% for granted patents and 72% for applications. So, uh, in general, in general, the uh, patenting in Latin America did not change in the after trips period. But when we separate residents and non-residents, we find that uh, non-residents patent systematically less than before trips vis-a-vis resident and uh, non-residents in our region. And the effect is very strong, 81%, 72%. Of course, we, we, I, would not, uh, I would not bet my house for, this, the, for, this, uh, for these percentages. But uh, anyway, it's only to give a, a magnitude of the impact. How, uh, do I have five minutes? So uh, summing up, summing up, <laughs> TRIPS had no overall effect in patenting activity in Latin American countries but it has favored patents by non-residents while probably discouraging patents by residents. Uh, and uh, because when only when Latin American countries are considered stronger IPR regimes only increase the patenting activities by non-residents and decrease that of residents and so which is the reading of this result, which is the interpretation of these results. Uh, well, the fact that IP, a stronger IPR regimes do not motivate an increase in patenting in, by residents in Latin America is no surprise for us. Because we have a number of other problems. Market failures, stronger than in developed countries in terms of access to credit and information. Institutional macro instability. Uh, lack of human capital in terms not only of quant quantity but mostly about quality. Uh, weak, what we call weak national systems of innovation, meaning that interactions among the actors of the innovation systems are weak. And uh, there, there could be also a problem of specialization patterns, that is, well, you, you sell mining or you sell petroleum or you sell soybean, and that, that, those activities are not very prone to 
innovation and patenting, etc. So I, I put this in with a question mark because I'm not very sure about this argument, but I'm pretty sure about the, this other argument. So if you, if, you, if you change the IPR regimes and you do not tackle these issues, so nothing will happen probably because well, firms have stronger IPR regimes, but they do not have access to credit or technical information. They live in a country where institutional and macroeconomic stability is, uh, is pervasive. They do not find the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, for, uh, the uh, good, uh, um, good personnel. Uh, the, there is a lack of hu human capital, and they, they, don't, do, they do not have strong interactions with universities, uh, technical organizations, etc. So, this is not surprising. And the, the, the interpretation is first change, deal with the structural issues, and then, uh, and, uh, and then IPR regimes could be important, uh, as it happened in Korea, for instance. So, well, 50 years ago, firms in Korea did not patent. They, they began to innovate, and then they began to, afterwards, they began to, to be interested in patents. Um, I was not interested in, changing, in learning about changing diapers before my first child was born. So, uh, first, you. You, you, you are interested in something in patenting when you, you, when you have something that to protect. Oh, the, the, but the, 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 interest, the interesting question, I think, in terms of the academic agenda and also in terms of policy regimes, is how we read the results about that, uh, the results uh, that shows that TRIPS motivated an increase in patenting by non-residents. So what's happening? We have two alternative interpretation, interpretations. First, foreigners feel safer to innovate and to develop and patent new technologies in Latin American countries. We, in fact, do not know how, ma how many of those patents uh, are uh, due to local innovation activities by multinationals located in Latin American countries, and how many of those patents are um, uh, Subsequent filings. So, uh, subsequent filings. Subsequent filings of uh, patents pre previously uh, granted in, in other in other countries. So uh, this is this this uh, anyway. Uh, we we do not know uh, whether uh, then uh, an, an, uh, a reform in the in the patent system motivated multinational firms to spend more in R and D in our countries, or it simply. Uh, made them uh, safer in order to transfer technology of our countries. The, the, obviously, the two, the two channels are very different in terms of their development implications, but anyways, this could be a positive interpretation of our results. So, and, 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 uh, be, be it that firms feel safer to transfer technology, be it that firms uh, feel uh, uh, they, they are fostered to make him more expenditures in R&D activities in, in, in the Latin American region. Uh, but, uh, so, but the interpretation is that multinational firms uh, make these subsequent filings in order to block innovation by uh, domestic uh, firms. So this could have a, uh, uh, be that they want to block innovation by domestic firms, or be that they, they do not want to block innovation, as the, uh, 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 the, it is not part of their objectives, but they block innovation anyway because these uh, this, this, uh, patents uh, by multinational firms block this kind of uh, process which I mentioned before, when you began first by making reverse engineering and copying, etc., and then you, you become uh, a, a world-class innovator. So, if this were the case, we could have a potentially damaging effect in terms of learning trajectories of Latin American firms. So, of course, the, uh, in fact, the two interpretations are not uh, alternative. They could be complementary. So it could be happening that uh, multinational firms are transferring, are transferring more uh, technologies to our region. It could be also that multinational firms feel safer to, uh, to uh, make more R&D exp expenditures in our region. And it could also be that local firms uh, uh, find troubles in terms of uh, um, doing reverse engineering and copying, etc. And so it could be uh, damaging in terms of their learning trajectory. So uh, our paper cannot say nothing about uh, which is the, the right interpretation. We don't have the data. And uh, so it, it is a, a development. Uh, a, a, it is a... A, 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 an agenda to be to be followed by other 
by, by, by other people. But uh, in terms of policy lessons, then, uh, if you want to foster innovation by residents, strengthening IPR regimes is like putting the cart before the horse. So, uh, so it, it, perhaps it, it has no damage by itself, but it won't solve the problems of uh, the low levels of innovation in our countries. Uh, so first we need to deal with the structural factors blocking innovation in the region. Our countries, fortunately, have in a, in a number of Latin American countries, uh, science and technology policies are stronger than before. So then we have begun to tackle some of these problems, but anyway, we have a long way to, uh, to, 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 to go after, uh, until we, 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 we become, uh, we, like, uh, I don't know, well, we, we, we won't be Japan, perhaps, <laughs> never, but we, we could be Spain, let's say, or... Nowadays. No, Spain before 2008. We, we, and, uh, and in the meantime, if, if you have a, if, if there is a Peruvian firm or a Chilean firm who has a world-class innovation, well, you can go to the USPT office and or to the European Patent Office and you find the, the protection you need because if you have a world-class innovation, you want to patent in the European, in the European Union or in the United States, not in Peru, because uh, the, the, your market is the world, not, not your country. And the, 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 the problem is what's happening with uh, the patenting by non-residents. So, uh, uh, we, our, our word of caution is, well, on one hand, technology transfer is good. Uh, we, we do not know how much does IPR regimes are important for technology transfer vis-a-vis -vis other factors. We are showing that IPR regimes foster technology transfer, but they, for instance, well, I, well I, 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 I know very well the literature on FDI, and there are many other factors. Uh, in terms of FDI attraction, and China is not a very good uh, performer in terms of IPR regimes, and it is the, the country who, who attracts more FDI in the developing world. So, of course, the, it is not only IPRs which uh, uh, foster uh, uh, technology transfer, but anyway, technology transfer is good, so IPR regimes, stronger IPR regimes foster technology transfer, that's a good news, but uh, it, it is not necessarily a good news if a strong, a stronger IPR regimes could be blocking uh, these learning trajectories by domestic firms if they prevent these firms to uh, to go through the way of uh, reverse engineering, copying, imitation, etc. Because uh, uh, which has been uh, a road that uh, allowed firms like Samsung, for instance, to become a world-class innovation. This firm began doing reverse engineering, and if in Korea. The, the IPR regime would, would, uh, uh, would have been as strong as today in, uh, in the 70s and in the 80s, Samsung would have not become a, a world-class innovator. I, this is my guess, obviously. But uh, anyway, this, uh, the, the fact is that they began doing reverse engineering. So that, that I think that uh, the, there is a very rich agenda in terms of uh, this, these issues. but there is a lack of people wanting to, <laughs> to, to make this kind of studies and we need more data. And uh, so WIPO could be, <laughs> could, uh, could help uh, in, that, in that regard in both sides. And uh, thank you.